Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday night, and that means another episode of Tech Talk Live with Giles McCoy. Um, it's a big week this week, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is a big whopper of a week. And what better way to start out a whopper of a week than with a behemoth, a colossus of, of, of empire, a massive shining star the north star of all audiophile audiophilia that's it audiophilia uh svs and the shining star of svs the one and only nick brown i mean i don't think i've ever had an intro like that i feel like i should run through a brick wall right now with like smoke shooting out and uh I, my entrance isn't going to do justice to that intro but giles it is such a pleasure to be here like you said it's Axpona Week, the largest audio show in North America. I know both of us are traveling out later this week, so I couldn't be more excited uh, to join the Home Theater Fanatics broadcast live stream, uh, but even more so because of what's happening later this week. Yeah, it, it's super exciting. And like I said, you know, the, all, you know, the introductions are a little tongue in cheek, but in all reality, it's always a pleasure and an honor to have the SVS brand and you in particular, because you're such an awesome dude on the show. And we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, I mean, the Kool-Aid man entrance might be something that sticks around with you for a while. I was more in my mind thinking like evil Knievel with a cape. Oh, kind of, you know, that's, that's in my head. Motorcycle so everybody out there, flaming George, ring. yeah, yeah. evil Knievel. And then you you come soaring in like you're you know the you're on the motorcycle and it comes up and then you let the motorcycle go down and then it's like you put your feet on the seat and you're just flying and the cape is behind you i can see it i got to get some animators to put this together because th this sounds like uh, the kind of interest that would do both of us justice i i think it would be pretty darn awesome um now first off we got a bunch of people in the audience and i'm going to try and call folks out um and one thing that I'm noticing is we are getting a handful of folks from the SVS side that I don't see on my live stream on a weekly basis. Bad people. <laughs> Boom, the first time boomers, for everything. Boomer CS, welcome. Joe Lemon or Limon, welcome. Uh, okay, and then I've got a turncoat, Larry. Larry is often at my show, but he has joined from the SVS feed. Oh, for sure. Well, Larry has joined us at uh, some of our in-person events. I believe the Home Entertainment Show out in California. So we know Larry very well, and uh, he's a great friend of the brand. So what's that's up? That's awesome. That that's awesome. And another another turncoat, Mad Piranha, usually mm -hmm. joins on my side. But man, you've got you've. I think you've played Pokemon with all these people. Is that <laughs> is that what you collected them all? My goodness. Yeah, but, I, 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 we we play VR uh, poker actually. <laughs> right on, but. Uh, Symphonics Audio is a purist and has joined from the, the the Giles McCoy side, but he's all like, Nick, what's up? Nick. He's a MacGyver. I, I met him at uh, the Florida Audio Expo um, and other shows too, but some of the contraptions he whips up, I'm, I'm astounded by this rigging for height effect speakers. Sorry, I'm going off the radar here. Right. Oh yeah. No, he, he's, he's definitely got it going on and he will be at Expona. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to talk about Expona, uh, you know, in a bit and I, I'm very interested. So everybody that's on, if you're going to be at Expona, you know, let us know. Uh, and I'm curious to see who all, who all is out there. Uh, Masterlock777, welcome, uh, welcome from Colorado to your hello from Colorado because I'm also in Colorado and I'm in Castle Rock. Uh, so he'll probably be like, I'm in Castle Rock too. I didn't even know it all. <laughs> that it, you know, it's funny how often that happens. The doorbell right? rings all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but let's set the stage for folks that might not be in the know, right? We might have up. Oh, here's another one. Robert, Colorado. Colorado's in the house here. I mean, we we got it. Um, and Siphonic says he'll drop over for a chat. But for folks that aren't in the know, for the one or two people out there that might not be familiar with SVS and the Nick Brown, uh, let everybody know who you are, 
who SVS is and why they should care briefly. I mean, we're, we're not here to get deep in, into that because I want to talk about the evolution speakers uh, yeah, a lot. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I don't think I've earned uh, a the title yet. That is the Larry from our team, but I appreciate you giving me a, a the there. Um, <laughs> the. He's, he's been hashtagged actually. Uh, but wow. no, SVS is, uh, has been around for about 23 years. Uh, we were founded in Youngstown, Ohio. That's still where our operational hub is located uh, in a garage with these big cylinder subwoofers and really where uh, we were coming from was trying to bring a, a level of performance for the price that didn't exist you know back 20 so odd years ago um you know there was subwoofers they they started you know at astronomical prices there there wasn't uh, a lot of competition and uh, and we really wanted to kind of disrupt things so uh, that's where we entered the fray as a direct to consumer uh, model and and bringing uh, world-class performance at, at prices that just were unheard of at the time. And, and we've really tried to continue with that mentality as we've gone. And uh, now we have something like 21 different subwoofer SKUs. We have uh, a, a Prime Series speakers, our brand new Ultra Series speakers, which is our new flagship line, and then accessories, which have been one of the faster growing parts of our business over the past few years. Again, sort of trying to bring in that uh, performance for the price, bang for the buck, whatever you want to call it, uh, and, and really set the standard in, in whatever product quarter, uh, category we enter, including wireless audio too. So uh, that's sort of a SVS in a nutshell. And you know we really try to take care of our people. We have a, a really awesome community. Um, they're very supportive and, and we love to give back with giveaways, things like that. So uh, I look forward to kind of diving into all of that today. Ah, that's awesome. And, thank, and thanks for the, the background information here. Um, so I think maybe maybe before we talk about the shows and stuff, let, let's just go over the the elephant in the room, the, the big news, right? Um, and that is you guys, okay, and this is a Giles interpretation, right? So this this is not the, you know, SVS didn't say this was our secret plan, uh, but this is just Giles looking. But to me, what it feels like is SVS said, all right, boys and girls, we're about to get serious up in this house, and we're going to drop some speakers that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything else that you're going to see at these crazy high-end shows. And that that's what I feel that the Ultra Evolution speakers are, right? I mean, it, it feels like you guys are coming out swinging, saying, you know what? We're going to build a audio file. And, and you know, not not to use that to classify, but just to kind of say this is really designed for that high level of performance, that high level of sonic clarity and and just that luscious goodness that we're all into. You guys said we're we're about to build this thing and we're going to bring it out and and we're going to show the world what we can do. That's that's what it feels like. I mean, um, maybe you can let everybody know what what's really up with the evolution a little bit. Outside of well, I, I don't know if I can trajectory. improve upon sort of that preface you gave me, but you, you nailed it. I mean, that was really it. The original Ultra Series, uh, you know, they're about 12 years old. So certainly, uh, you know, we're, we're due for a refresh. And at the time, uh, they absolutely put us on the map as a high performance speaker manufacturer. You know, it, it definitely was a, a far departure from anything we had ever done. We actually did a, a line of speakers about five years before that, which uh, have been retired and never to be spoken of again. It's one of those things where our CEO <laughs> has a joke, like they're, uh, the industry is littered with subwoofer brands that have tried to make speakers and speaker brands that have tried to make subwoofers. You know, you tend to do one thing really well and stick with it. Um, and we just wanted to kind of break that mold. And so the original Ultra Series was, was our attempt at doing that. And they did phenomenally well for us. I think it sort of, again, established us as not just a subwoofer company, um, but we were still viewed as primarily, you know, OSVS, they're, they're that subwoofer company. And then we launched the Prime Series, which were uh, a lot of the technology from the Ultra Series trickled down to uh, some lower prices. Uh, and again, those have, have done really, really well. They opened us up to uh, entire new markets as far as you know the pricing for them. But to your point, I don't think they were quite at that echelon of, of being in the conversation with some of these really hi-fi speakers that you're seeing, you're hearing and, and you're experiencing at shows like uh, Expona. So you know when we came to starting development on the uh, Ultra Evolution series, uh, which is about two and a half, three years ago, uh, you know Smith Freeman was, he's our main product designer and Gary, our, our CEO, wanted to look at it sort of a no holds bar 
approach in terms of, you know, what we, we could do with material science. You know, what were some of the new materials that were being used in speakers? Uh, cabinet architecture, you know, how the form factor, how the industrial design can affect performance. Uh, and then just general speaker technology, voicing, testing, some of the new microphones and, and the ability that you can actually uh, bring a speaker to market. Um, how could we take a fusion of those things and create, you know, ultimately what would be uh, our best attempt at a hi-fi speaker that absolutely obliterated what we did with the original Ultra Series? And so that's sort of what got us to the Ultra Evolution in terms of the naming convention, uh, but also that sort of level of acoustic excellence while still having somewhat disruptive pricing um, and really letting our passion for great sound shine through with these uh, with these new speakers. That, that's awesome. And, you know, if you just start kind of on the outside and work your way in, when you look at them, you know, they, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word to use. It's not, they're not imposing, but they, they make a statement, right? When you look at them, you're all like, these are serious speakers, right? Because they're, they're not your typical, uh, I don't know, rectangle, you know, box, Right. I mean, they, you know, they, they have character. Right. And of course, that's really from a design necessity and a design philosophy around what you were trying to make them do. Uh, uh, but the, you know, aesthetically, it works out really well. Right. Um, and, and I don't know if you want to get into the whole, you know, time alignment of drivers and that kind of stuff, but uh, maybe just a little bit about that, you know, why the, the angles are more than just for looks. Absolutely. And, and I want to hit on that uh, acoustically centered time alignment. But to your first point, you know, I, we had an interesting experience at CES where we sort of very softly, you know, unveiled them. We didn't send out a press release. We didn't make any noise about them. Um, we just put them out on display and we were going to demonstrate them and we were going to get feedback from people, um, you know, knowing that they would launch in about two or three months afterwards. And we, you know, obviously do a, a bigger deal about it. And, uh, you know, people were coming into our space and one of the things we wanted to do was not make them divisive. Our original ultra tower, our flagship tower sort of had this sweeping trapezoidal look a big wide footprint. And, you know, it, it could create strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, what we found with the uh, ultra evolution series is, you know, people were coming uh, up to them and, and we'd have, you know, and this is CES. So this is the mainstream tech community. This is not just your, uh, you know, hi-fi crowd that is at Expo and some of these other shows. And people were, you know, saying, oh, wow, those are so sleek and and they're almost uh, like sexy in a way. And then other people are like, those are super masculine and those look like, you know, badass, like they would really uh, fit in my man cave. And then other people were like, those would go great in my living room. And so we wanted to create a uh, sort of iconic looking design. And I hate throwing that word around because it's used way too much, but a design that would really not like be uh, sort of pigeonholed, not, not look like this is right. what it is, like high, overly high tech or, you know, overly branded, uh, anything like that, but clean and, and just match the, uh, you know, the sound that we were able to create with them. And I thought that was one element that we really nailed it with our, our design team was getting that sort of, look where again it just doesn't it's not divisive in the way that the original ultra series were it allows you to apply your whatever label to it uh, that you want to um you know and to your point about the acoustically centered time alignment uh you know I, we're not going to take credit as being the first ones to ever do this anyone who's followed you know the speaker industry for a while has probably seen mm -hmm, this sort sure. of angled front cabinet um but i would say this may arguably be the least expensive speaker where you'll ever find uh, this driver array and this uh, this cabinet architecture. And essentially what's happening is, you know, the tweeter is the center point in between the two mid ranges and the two woofers. Uh, and the sonic emanation point of that tweeter, which is the very front of the dome, uh, is aligned with the inner part of the cone of each one of the mid range and the woofers. And by having this exact alignment of the sonic sonic emana emanation, I, I always trip on right. that. Sonic emanation points of all those drivers in the tweeter, uh, it allows the sound to reach your ears at the exact same instant. You know, the speed of sound is the speed of sound, uh, and it's just one other thing you can do outside the crossover to ensure you're getting uh, that perfect pinpoint imaging where you know you're hearing sounds in space exactly where they should be, and you're getting that sort of sense of. Uh, just timing and, uh, um, you know, that, that again, smooth frequency response uh, throughout the driver and, and just allowing that to, to give you the most convincing experience possible. 
Yeah. And like you said, you, you find this type of technology in extremely expensive uh, speakers, you know, and, you know, I'll call out one brand because it's like super duper crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, I don't remember the the model or the model, but you know, the, the Wilson super upside down chrono master Supreme, uh, you know, the, the, the reason that it's all adjustable is to do this, right? So it's that, that same kind of concept. And ultimately the goal is to eliminate phase shift, you know, due to physical distance, right? Because you can't chop your speaker up. You know what I mean? You, you can't, take it apart and move the pieces around. So having it designed in is really awesome. Really cool. Um, all right. Let me, uh, let me pull this out here and I'm going to just take a look and say hi to a few people. Uh, Bruce Reed, uh, thanks for joining from Syracuse. Um, and you know, I've heard these, uh, for a limited amount of time. Uh, and he says they look amazing, but they sound, uh, it as well. And, and they, my memory is that they were good and I can't wait to spend more time, uh, this weekend with them. Uh, and then we've got Brian Ramska is with us. Uh, shampoo time. I mean, what's better than shampoo time? I mean, I, I'm down. Uh, Zedwick Zedwick is here. Grant Wilno, Matt B, uh, uh, Van Gool, Dino, uh, Boomer CS. Uh, we talked to him before. T Dinning is with us. So lots of folks here making comments. And, you know, if you're out in the audience, don't be shy. Uh, uh-oh. Uh, this this will be a... a, a Awesome one, the Titans, which is my favorite name. Super Supernova Moore. I, I you know, Supernova is a good guy. Um, and he's got the Titans coming. And I love that name. I mean, the, the pinnacle name is great too, but man, Ultra Evolution Titans. I know. Oh. I wish they could all have names like that. Like, you know, that that's some one of those things where like you go back and forth, and you know, some of them are just like, yes. And then we got to ultra evolution elevation, and we're like, no. And so it's just the ultra elevation. But Titan was one of those, like, as soon as it came out, it's like, oh, we should we give them all, like, you know, Greek or, you know, whatever, mytholo- mythological names, um, you know. And so it's uh, that one we really nailed it. And I want to know if uh, uh, if he got the white gloss or if he got the black gloss for those Titans. Uh, so if you put that in the comments, I'm curious because I am dying to get the white gloss ones here in my. Uh, don't my they list. don't they look pretty cool? Uh, I don't know why the Titans look so good in white. I think they look better than any speaker we've ever made uh, in the white gloss specifically. So um, I I will be waiting until we fulfill more customer orders, but um, it's on my uh, short list. That's cool. And Siphonic saves me with the uh, model. It's the Chronosonic XVX Wham. <laughs> I, can, I mean, I'll take that comparison every day. Was that about yeah. 300K? Uh, I think yeah, I think that well, yeah, we'll take it. I think it's, up. I think, I think it's more um, uh, uh, Master Lock. I think he uh, he succinctly summarizes the the feeling around the white. It, it is indeed yeah, it's seven hundred k. So Ooh, that you know, you just a, a, a mere pittance. Um, so one one hundred thirtieth of the price at five. <laughs> I think that's right. and and you want to know what uh, and. Maybe this wouldn't be true, but if you took some people and sat them down and put the speakers behind a sheet and they couldn't see what's going on, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what the, you know what I mean? I wonder what people would choose. I don't I mean, know. We, we, they would have a lot more to lose in that competition than we would, but uh, I, it would be something that I would be intrigued to see the results of. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh. so these are uh, live and streaming now. So they're available. They are out there in the wild um and uh, you're doing a piano black piano white and then a wood grain in in black or dark ash or something correct uh i should um mention there's seven total SKUs, and two of them are not quite available yet we have a smaller tower which is our uh, ultra evolution tower and then a uh, smaller bookshelf, our Ultra Evolution Nano, which will be available in late May, early June. Um, all of the other five models, the Titan, the Pinnacle, which are our two uh, larger towers, the center channel, the elevation, and then the uh, larger bookshelf are all available now in the two gloss finishes. And then that black oak finish will come at the same time that the two uh, okay. Nano and, and Ultra Tower. So those will be available uh, again in about a couple months. And uh, yeah, everything's available now on the uh, the SVS site. We're starting to see them pop up in some of our retailers around the country as well. We actually sold out of our first uh, production run in Europe um, 
I think the white gloss is, is going over huge there. It's actually a way more popular finish in Europe than it is in the US. We sell about eight, nine to one black to, to white here in the US. In uh, in Europe, it's almost 50-50. Uh, so we, uh, you know, there's been a lot of interest in this because the European market never really got behind our speakers. The Prime, I don't think was up to what I think some of the other brands that were compared to over there. Uh, but with this new line, it's, uh, I'm actually shocked by how uh, how receptive it's been in uh, you know in some of the European countries. That that's awesome. And you know to talk about colorways, um, I, I've noticed that you know geographically uh, there there is a lot of variance in how tastes kind of skew. And you know in speakers the normal colors are white or black, but then in components you'll see either black or silver. Um, and uh, in in the USA for a, a long time it was just like black component black component black component except for like the older stuff coming out of the 60s 70s that kind of stuff and you know it was more silver back then but if you looked over at the Asian market for example it was all silver all the time right um, but I, I've seen that start to change uh, and I personally really like uh, the silver as well so um, you you want me to share this out what you just yeah I just there? I wanted to show the white gloss and so, and this sort of shows all the speakers so uh, yeah there we go. Since we're all geeking out about them, there you go. There's the, yeah. uh, the the full on surround setup, very similar to what we'll be running here at Exponent too. That oh nice. Uh, so one thing that I would one meeting that I would really like to have been in is uh, when design sat down with manufacturing and said, "Hey, we want to build this concave speaker that's going to have a concave kind of shape grill," and, and they were like, "Oh." God, we must build what? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I the the manufacturing on this must be sophisticated and challenging. Yeah, it's uh, it has to be. it's not for the faint of heart, and I, I believe that is why you have not seen this cabinet architecture in in lower price models before. You know, and, and you know it takes some some real fabrication. Uh, we're fortunate enough to uh, own part of the factory where uh, our products are manufactured. And uh, and that allows us to have a little bit more leeway with some of the uh, you know material components as well as the fabrication techniques that we have and, and the machinery that we have access to. Um, so we were able to do this at a, you know, a lower price point than I, I think other brands may have been able to. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the original prototypes, you know, to get the right angle and to get it all set in the same place, uh, there was a lot of uh, long nights for our, our development team in, in getting it right. And even like the grills, the grills have that curve and they're our first magnetic grills uh, to get those right. You know, it really was no stones left unturned to be able to get it to that point where uh, it looked natural. It had that curve and it achieved what we wanted to do uh, acoustically. Right. on. You, you should have a uh, a game to see who can throw the a Titan grill and have it stick on, and whoever can do that from the furthest away wins that set of speakers, even if the <laughs> horseshoes are all punched grills. out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny about magnetic grills, too? It's like there are some speakers, and I don't name names, where like literally you can sneeze, you know, five feet away from them, and the magnetic grill will like fly off. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we, you know, neodymium magnets are pretty expensive, which is why we haven't, you know, we've always had the pin cup retention system, but we knew we wanted that clean front baffle. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a, 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 an important thing for us. And I promise you can sneeze as hard as you want on these speakers and that grill's not going anywhere. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, you know, we, we have a number of kind of uh, specification and, and, and specific questions. Um, so if folks want to go and look up all of the specifications on the speaker, that's all on the website, right? So they can go Absolutely. and look and see. And I'll do my best to answer them. But I should also say, um, if you didn't know, uh, SVS is world class as far as customer service. And everyone says that. But I think Giles can back me up here. Like we take care of our people and we are Absolutely. super responsive. So if it's something where, you know, the marketing guy, me, can't handle it, uh, you know, you can interact with our team via SMS, chat, email. Uh, we do video consultations where they'll literally look around your room. They can help you adjust settings, help you with placement. So take advantage of that if uh, if you have some of these technical questions uh, that maybe I can't answer, or you're just curious, you know, to know how it might interact with with your space and your other components. Uh, so that's my long winded way of saying I don't know everything, but uh, our team is standing by to you know assist you seven yeah. days a week. And and that that's really a a valuable offer, right? It's not 
often, you know, where a company will say, yeah, just call us and we'll talk through it, right? Even if you're not going to buy anything, you know, we'll give you our advice about what to do in your room and that kind of thing. And, you know, it's, you know, it, it takes a lot to hire a staff of, of customer uh, support specialists that have that skill set, right? And have that knowledge. So there's a lot of training that has to go on to make that happen. So it's a, it's a really, really good offer. Um, so for the for the specs, um, you know, everybody go look. One of the questions was around tweeter height. I, I think that varies by model, right? So the tweeters aren't exact, you know, if you if you get the Titan versus the Pinnacle, you know, they're, they're it's slightly different position, correct? Yeah, they're, they're different heights between the Ultra Evolution Tower, Titan, and Pinnacle. Um, so you'll see that the tweeter uh, slightly higher as you go up in each line. And one thing I should mention, because we have heard that, you know, it, it seems like it, you know, at ear, when seated, it's it's close to ear level, but maybe a little bit lower. Um, the vertical dispersion characteristics with our new tweeter and, and with the new driver array, um, they measured better than we expected, because that was one of the conversations. Do we need to bring them all up a little bit? Uh, but we found that, you know, the height that they're at and having that MTM, the mid tweeter, mid arrangement yep. really gave just a broad uh, sweet spot and and just, you know, pinpoint imaging, but also just kind of had those dispersion characteristics where you're not getting that sense of like beaming where it's like, you know, it sounds great right here. It doesn't sound here great. Or if I stand up and like, you mm -hmm. know, it feels like I'm out of the sound field, um, you know, so we were very cognizant of that. Um, but yeah, you, you'd have to look at the. Uh, the dimensions on each individual tower to figure that out. And, uh, you know, I, I can guarantee you it was something we looked at really hard um, when developing those. That, that's super cool. And, uh, you know, I, for everybody that's with us right now, um, I would uh, urge everyone cool. to stick around because later in the show, there's going to be something pretty cool that happens that I'm not going to say what it is right now. But if you stick around, um, you'll you'll find out about it and it could make you marginally happy for someone right mark maybe, maybe i don't know hey, hey, well i mean it's my, that's a, that's a good uh it's a good cliffhanger right there yeah i mean just marginally interesting for for folks that uh that that are here with us tonight um but i, I do want to change gears right and not just talk about product all the time because uh sure. um, you know it's it's exciting stuff and if you want to hear it this weekend absolutely come to expona and in that vein what would they hear if they came to Expona and came to what now is becoming soon to be a completely booked floor of only SVS gear? Ha, um, not a whole floor. We got <laughs> we got a couple suites, although we, we probably should have our own floor. We've gotten some complaints in the past years, but they put us way out in the corner, which is where we asked to be so we can have our fun. Uh, but no, this is going to be great for us. We have two suites, a, uh, a two-channel stereo audiophile suite, and then a home theater room. And so for so long, we've always been the guilty pleasure at these shows. That's our sort of little internal joke where it's like, you know what? I go to all these hundred thousand dollar systems. They're playing classical music. They're playing jazz. They're playing, you know, the Eagles, Diana Crawl, whatever it is. And then I come to SVS and they're playing Godzilla versus Kong, Mission Impossible, Mad Max. And, you know, it's sort of a different sort of dynamic uh, sonic experience for people. Uh, and we are still going to be doing that. But we've realized that with these new speakers, we absolutely had to step up our game as far as that two channel crowd. I mean, we have to be honest, like that is the majority of folks who attend these shows. They're interested in music and, and a lot of them, you know, solely have two channel systems and they're doing a better job. These audio shows of bringing out the home theater crowd. Um, I don't think gaming is quite caught on yet, but like they're trying. Uh, but in our rooms, we're going to have a full on 5.2.2. Uh, home theater system with our Ultra Evolution Titans, the center, uh, two of the bookshelves in the rear, and then two of our Ultra Evo Elevations. Can't get that one right. And then uh, a <laughs> pair of our sealed cabinet SB3000 subwoofers, which uh, are some of our most popular models. And I'm sorry, we're not bringing the PB16s, but we are in about a 15 by 18 hotel room. So there is a limit to how much you can pressurize those or how much uh, headroom you actually need. And we found our SB3000s interact with those hotel rooms in the uh, in the best way possible. Um, so for our two channel room, um, you know, again, we've always had this mentality of like, let's just run things off an AV receiver or very entry level equipment. And if you come into our room and you experience in a, a sound that really is, is, you know, as good, if not better than a lot of what you're hearing, then imagine if you feed it better front end equipment. Uh, again, we, we, we thought that wasn't good enough. So we, we've got some 
I would call it mid fi. It's not going to be fifty thousand dollar mono blocks. It's not going to be you know Krell and Goldman and you know any of this stuff that is uh, is going to be worth more than the entire system. We're not going to have fifty thousand dollar cables, uh, but you know we'll use some Emotiva, some Cambridge gear, some stuff that's a little bit upscale from what we've used in the past, and we'll have a pair of our uh, Ultra Evolution Pinnacles, our flagships, uh, in two channel. And then our Ultra Evolution bookshelves powered by our Prime Wireless Pro sound base, which uh, to me, I can't wait to have that system in uh, my um, bedroom because that is what's being connected to my TV uh, when, when ultimately they get delivered. So that's uh, sort of our take on a more modern 2.1, 2.0 bookshelf system powered by our wireless streaming amp. And then uh, a more you know prototypical hi-fi system with the uh, preamp and, and uh, streamer. Right on. Um, you know, don't don't be shocked if you know we show up with uh, you know a, a couple of you know hundred fifty thousand dollar Boulder monoblocks and some other things and and like hey can we just for a minute here hook this up and just check it out you well, know I will say if there are any of those manufacturers who would like to feature some speakers uh, SVS will listen we're absolutely uh, all ears if uh, if any of the component manufacturers want to try something. Um, in, in that vein. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now, but certainly uh, we've realized the the value of having better front end equipment. And that's going to be something we adopt going forward with our two channel system. No, that, that's great. And I think, uh, I think you guys are ready to enter the, you know, that arena, right? This, this is, you, you have passed go. I hereby dub the audiophile material. Well, thank <laughs> everybody's, you. everybody's out there golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, this is it. This is where we vet that gets validated, you know, and, and people are generally too polite to say to your face, like, honestly, you know, they're way too bright or like some people aren't or like, you know, these would really benefit if you, you know, took that den on out to the dumpster and, and hooked it up to some better front end. Um, but, you know, when you have a speaker that is trying to be in the conversation with, you know, these $700,000 pair, then you uh, you got to give them the best chance they can at, uh, you know, at competing. And, and that's sort of our mentality here going forward with some of these shows. That That's awesome. Um, so Double uh, A has joined us. I uh, always like to welcome him. He's a, uh, you know, a steadfast viewer on on my show. And I really appreciate um, all the the time he puts in uh, coming and hanging out. So Double A, welcome. Welcome to the show. And then, you know, for everybody that's here that's not a member of my channel, you know, head on over to at Giles McCoy and, um, and, you know, click that subscribe button. I do this stream every week, I actually stream three different shows every week now uh, because I am insane. Um, <laughs> maybe almost as many as Nick does. <laughs> I'm sure you do a lot. You are prolific. I will give you all yeah. the props for that. Right on. Um, okay. So uh, staying in the vein of the show, uh, or, or, or maybe all the shows you guys are doing this thing with a music list or something. I, what, what's the deal? What's going on? I don't know what, what what's up with all that. So we do uh, our virtual audio file happy hours and uh, you know, we've started curating playlists uh, much like you have, you know, these comments flying in right now. Um, you know, we do once or twice a month uh, live stream broadcasts uh, where we just sort of have guests or shoot the shit or whatever. Um, and one of the things that, you know, we, we thought would be cool was to just throw it out there. Like let's build the ultimate subwoofer demo playlist and just have people start naming songs. And so we started doing that with a couple different genres and, and it's become really popular for us. Uh, and there's actually a, a program called sound is S O N D I I Z. I believe it is. And it allows you to take a single playlist on Spotify, for instance, and then have it recreated on all the major platforms, title, Amazon, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, basically we've started curating these playlists and we're going to do the same thing at Exponus. So whether you want to submit one via email or via an online form or just come by, uh, I would love to actually do some short form video where someone like yourself, Giles, maybe shows up and I'm like, what's your song, Giles, and why? And we're just trying to focus on really well recorded audiophile tracks that aren't sort of the prototypical uh, cliche audiophile track. And, uh, and I'm hoping we'll get a, a great list of demo songs that show off, you know, the high frequencies, the low frequencies, the transient speed, like some of the different elements uh, that mm -hmm. people look for when shopping for really hi-fi speakers and then have this playlist and then share it back out with our community. And this can become essentially an audition, you know, playlist for people who may be considering different speakers. Uh, so again, uh, there'll be a form, there'll be a QR code and, and you can just come by and talk to me and I'll 
write it in my notebook. But uh, within a week after the show, we'll have this playlist put together and uh, and uh, and share it back out with our community. So, well, is it going to be named something like the SVS list so people could just go to their platform of choice and search for SVS and potentially find these playlists? Yeah, you can actually find the uh, ultimate subwoofer demo playlist just by searching SVS in any one of those uh, those streaming platforms. And this one will probably be branded for Expona, like the SVS Expona, you know, uh, audiophile nice. playlist. So we'll, we'll, we'll give them some props since uh, that's really the centerpiece for where it's being curated from. Um, but yeah, it'll be uh, easy to find and we'll have links on, uh, on our social and, and on our site in different places. That that's super cool. Super cool. Um, all right. Well, I, I do want to talk about a few other things, right? So, um, I, I guess to, to finish out the, the show kind of topic, um, uh, uh, this is Exponent coming up next. So what does the rest of the year look like for SVS, for people that want to, you know, kind of say hi, meet and greet and see things in person? What what does the rest of the year hold? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we we uh, just got done with Montreal Hi-Fi Show, which I had no idea how big that is. That is Exponent in Canada. It's massive. So if you ever get a chance, I know Siphonics was there. I hope I said that right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh you know, I just missed him, but definitely recommend that show. But coming forward, we got Expona. And then on May 30th in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside Pennsylvania, about 20 minutes or uh, Philadelphia, about 20 minutes. We're doing a in-store event at uh, one of our top dealers called Worldwide Stereo. Uh, I think a lot of people in that region probably know who they are. Uh, that'll be May 30th. We'll be doing uh, similar to what we did at Listen Up when you, when you were able to make it out, mm -hmm. that kind of event with uh, with one of our partners there. Uh, then we'll be at the Munich High End Show, uh, the largest audio show in the world, which if you are an ultimate hobbyist, there is no greater mecca than the uh, – Munich High End show out there in Germany, so I, I would strongly recommend that. Uh, we got M Wave, which uh, yeah, I'm sure you're aware of, uh, as far as a lot of uh, Michael, the uh, youth man, put that together out in Kansas City. Uh, the yeah, Home Entertainment Fiesta. Show in uh, Costa Mesa. Uh, we're planning on doing Capital Audio Fest, which is not till November, uh, but that will be the first time we've uh, exhibited officially as SVS. We've we've worked with a local audio group there, but um, we'll be there in in full. Uh, in November. And then we'll have a number one, a uh, number of those other dealer events like the worldwide stereo one, uh, different regional dealers that will pop up here between now and then. Uh, so we'll certainly announce those. And then if I'm missing one, I think the Pacific audio show is one that we haven't done before, uh, but we're hearing good things. And, uh, and I think that might be one we have to take the, take the leap on for the first time this year. That's outstanding. That's a, uh, that's a, a full, kind of uh, slate of things and, and events to attend. So uh, everybody out there, you, you have no excuse. If you want to hear it, you can hear it. Find I them. Just, they're just, it. They're, they're special in the sense that, you know, a lot of times when people come to the shows may never be able to own something like this, but with SVS, they can actually own it. There's a much yeah. larger percentage of people who can go there and be like, that sounds just as good as that other room, you know, that is 10 times the price. And I think that's where we really see the value in these because we hear that over and over and over from people who come to our space. And honestly, it's when brands like SVS go to these shows, it brings awareness to these shows. It helps the hobby. It's the whole rising tide lifts all boats. And that's part of our mission. We don't look at them as competitors, you know, the, the people in the rooms next to us. We look at them as, you know, folks who are going to benefit from what we bring to the table and vice versa. So that's kind of our mentality. And, the, you know, they're a bit of a grind, but it's totally worth it. And they're fun. Like, I, I love going to different cities and eating the food and meeting the people who, uh, who own our products or who might. Uh, and so we'll keep doing them. That's that's outstanding. Um, now, I, I have to call out uh, Mr. Tin Bender or Mrs. Tin Bender or Junior Tin Bender. I don't know. Um, but uh, this person subbed to Giles and loves my viewpoint. And I, I love you too. Everyone, this is an example for all viewers. Listen to Tin. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> a little selfless self-promotion. Shameless. So, so Tim, this, this might be a good segue into, uh, you know, announcing what uh, what people who leave such in instructive Ooh. and, and uh, wonderful comments. Uh, I would love, and I know everyone wants an Ultra Evolution giveaway, but you can't always get what you want. I would love to give away an SB1000 Pro subwoofer to one person who has left a comment and that doesn't have to be just tonight i know you get a fair amount of viewers who tune in after the fact so yes SBS yes will will uh put up an sb1000 pro subwoofer this is dynamite in a compact box somebody's really gonna love it uh and i will let you 
choose how you want to give this away, Giles, but it's compliments of SVS for uh, all the contributions you've made to the uh, That, to the that is awesome. I, I love it when we have an opportunity to give back. But I'm going to put some rules around this thing. Ooh, okay. um, that Yeah, just, just a handful. If you're here on the SVS channel and you make comments on the SVS channel, those are not going to be an entry because I have no way to come back and interact. Um, you know, Nick's Nick's a good guy, but he is not good enough to be like, Giles, here's our password. Just come into our YouTube channel and do as you wish. So if you want to be entered into the giveaway, come back over to at Giles McCoy. It's on the screen, right uh, there. Uh, and uh, you, don't, you don't have to subscribe. Just make a comment and uh, it, it can't just be like me. It needs to be, I would like this subwoofer for this reason. And I will choose randomly amongst those folks and, and I'll reach out and get your contact information. Um, but it needs to come through my channel because I don't really have a good way to do that otherwise. And I also just like to greedily pull more people to my channel. Again, shameless self-promotion. Uh, but that is very generous, Nick. Thank you so much. Well, it's our pleasure. And I think if you left a comment like sub to Giles and love his viewpoint, it might get you an extra vote, but I'm not making the rules here. This is the man in charge. <laughs> I have, have no comment on that. However, man, those, those comments do make my heart full of warmth. That's, <laughs> that is 100% true. Um, and talking about things being full of warmth, um, let's talk about some of the things that SVS does that kind of spreads love around the world. Right. And, um, you know, this is, this is maybe a side of the the company that isn't discussed quite as much, but you guys have a, you know, a, a charitable uh, branch, so to speak. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have efforts uh, for that kind of thing. And I'm really curious if you could talk a little, a little more about that and, and what you guys have going on. Uh, because yeah, you know, I, mean, I always like it when, you know, uh, successful people are able to give back and, and you're, you're going to be a, a leader there. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think this is a little, the term I I've heard is like inside baseball. You know, we believe in cause marketing, but not like putting it front and center. You know, we're not like, you know, buy a subwoofer, we'll donate a pair of earplugs to, you know, somebody who goes to concerts a lot or whatever. Like it's not that kind of thing. Um, we have certain causes that we support um, locally in, in the Youngstown, Ohio area. Uh, but then also, um, you know, the the arts. So the Washington Performing Arts, uh, this is actually a, an organization very close to, to Gary, our, our CEO. Um, he's actually on their board. And uh, what we've started doing is supplying um, our prime wireless pro speaker systems, which is pretty much an all-in-one powered speaker pair. They're, they're uh, great. Yeah, to music programs and classrooms in, in need who don't have any sort of AV gear to really be able to let their students know what uh, a real cello sounds like, or to be able to play back sound and music that will inspire them to maybe move forward. Uh, so that's one part of what the WPA, the Washington Performing Arts does is, is providing technology and, uh, and music, musical instruments, things like that uh, to classrooms, which, you know, because of funding are, are unable to have those kind of things. So we heavily support that. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you know, the idea of that is let's hope to inspire people at a young age to want to pursue music and the arts and, and to get involved in uh, in building a career or just having a passion for sound and, and, and audio. Uh, but then on the other side, we're also taking aspiring artists who work with the WPA and, and helping them have a platform to actually perform and, and pursue careers where maybe they wouldn't be able to. Um, so, you know, as part of what we're, our vision is to, again, bring the audio industry up by attracting new people to the world of hi-fi and the world of high performance. Um, we want to do the same thing in terms of cultural outreach and getting people interested in music and sound in ways that is, uh, you know, progressive, but also, um, you know, hits them at home and, and right. allows them to really engage on that level. Uh, and then we also work with the CTA quite a bit, the Consumer Technology Association. They put on mm -hmm. the uh, CES show um, and they do a lot with accessibility uh, so, you know, people may have seen our, our, some of our social posts from CES. We actually had Stevie Wonder in our booth and, um, you know, that's we, really we worked, cool. yeah, I mean, that was that's just really a, cool. totally out of the blue too. And he spent like an hour and a half just listening to all of our different speakers. He was listening to his own music and bobbing his head. And like, it was <laughs> one of those moments like that was sort of surreal. And it was just this, like, people just started gravitating towards our booth and like created this big circle around it. And it was like, it was out of this world. Um, but, you know, part of what we support too is, you know, getting technology uh, out there to people who have, uh, you know, accessibility 
uh, either, um, sorry, I'm um, not explaining it well, but like they, they have a certain, uh, you know, they're either visually impaired or they have um, other sorts of impairments that don't allow them um, to be able to, you know, live as fulfilling a mm -hmm. life as they, as they could otherwise. And so that's part of what we support through the CTA. And, uh, and Stevie Wonder is actually a great advocate for that as well, uh, specifically in the world of audio because of what an icon he is. Um, so those are just some of the little things that we do that are, you know, meant to be passion projects behind the scenes. But when somebody asks, I love talking about it because like to, I've been to these classrooms in DC where these, uh, these speakers are being set up and like, the way the kids react to it and to be able to hear music and to be able to, you know, feel bass and, and understand sound on a deeper level than they ever have. Um, you know, that, that part is meaningful. And, and so I get a, you know, a lot of a pleasure out of and joy out of my job just by being able to do something like that. That That's really cool and, and very inspiring. Um, and, you know, when you, when you think about musical performance, so, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was big into, in, into, into band, right. You know, I played, uh, I played trumpet and soprano bugle and I marched drum and bugle corps and, you know, uh, competed internationally and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, that became a very kind of foundational part of my, you know, high school and younger kind of uh, growth and, and, and maturity. And, you know, I formed friends there that, you know, are still lifelong, right. Uh, which is really awesome. And, and, you know, I was able to, uh, uh, you know, just uh, this past week, um, my son, he uh, he plays trumpet and piano. My younger son, and uh, he was uh, at his trumpet lesson. His instructor, um, you know, we were chatting about some exercises and stuff for him to work on range and that kind of thing. And and I said, yeah, he needs to be able to play way above the the staff so that he can go join the the Blue Knights and and march drum corps. And she was like, oh, you you guys know about drum corps? I'm like, yeah. And and we're like, yeah, yeah. And, and the Blue Knights uh, are. Uh, um, the the core out of Colorado. God, I'm hoping I'm not messing that up. Yeah, uh, the blue uh, the blue devils are on the east coast. Um, but uh, uh, she, I asked her. Said, did you ever march? And she's like, Yeah, I marched South Wind in Alabama, and I marched South Wind in Alabama. Of course, I marched in 1989 <laughs> because I'm old, and yeah. she marched in 2008. <laughs> Or something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess the reason I say this stuff is that, you know, music is is a, a very uh, impactful item for, for youth, right? And, you know, I, I love to see how you guys are helping bring music, if it's just from listening or for performing uh, to uh, youth that might not have as much access as they would like to have. That's that's a big deal, and it's to be lauded. So, man, that's awesome. I, I'm really, really happy to hear that. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and my son actually played uh, trumpet all through high school, was the drum major. I played baritone, so maybe we could start a little brass ensemble here for uh, for the nice. uh, audio industry and, and play some uh, some gigs at these audio shows. That's right. I, I you know, I, I'm not quite a Winton Marcellus anymore, but uh, <laughs> I play a mean Saints go marching in. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I, I can uh, still play. Uh, I, I can still play uh, the Greenville High School marching band theme. Dun 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 now you're making me want to sing the uh, Portsmouth Patriots fight song now too. I got that one ingrained in my oh, memory forever. Man. Good. Uh oh, yay for the horn section. That's right, brass for life. It's <laughs> ironic because his name is Chris Wood. You know, you think you know, he'd be like a clarinet <laughs> Chris player? Chris Wood win. Yeah. Chris Wood win. No, oh, none. Thank of that. you for the brass love. Yeah, my uh, my brother played saxophone, so we were always you know kind of kind of like this. Mm. But yeah, for me, it's always brass uh, all the time. All right. Um, so I'm curious for everybody that's out there watching, um, have you guys watched uh, The Three Body Problem and have you watched Three Body, which is the Chinese version, and then have you read the books, which I don't know the name of, and then have you read the books in the original Chinese? So Nick, have you watched Three Body Problem yet on Nick's, uh, Netflix? I it's the only book series I've read cover to cover twice. Uh, I I was Sishin Lu, I believe, is the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, 
I, I don't know. I was just gripped by these. I love sort of sci-fi post-apocalyptic and this brought it all together in, in such a way. And there are, you know, some deep descriptions of technology that sort of went over my head, but I just thought it was woven in such a way. And, and the way that the aliens were presented was such a novel concept to me. And then the, the video game aspect of it too, like it just was such a interesting interplay between culture, technology, you know, alien conspiracies and, and all of that. Like it's, it, it had everything that I love uh, as far as a book series goes. And I'm, I've, I'm supposed to be watching it with my wife. She fell asleep during the second episode. So I have not been able to make uh -oh. it that one, uh, but I am absolutely uh, committed to finishing it. And I'm about to just plow through it and then I'll just rewatch it with her when, uh, when she has the time. Uh, but I, I'm not that far into it, uh, but I found the, the books to be just absolutely wonderful. And I would highly recommend them to anyone who's into sci-fi or alien, you know, conspiracies, things like that. Okay, so everybody, for the next 30 or so seconds, if you don't want to have spoilers, please, you know, la la or something. So I'm going to try and ask this in the least spoiler-ish way possible. But um, for the c television show, it ends at a certain point, and you find out that something's on the way, right? Um in, 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 and I don't know, I, I think they're going to be like four uh, seasons on uh, on the TV show, but I assume, and, and this is the spoiler part, uh, the, in the books, they, they come, right? D does it get to the point where they like show so, up? I mean, there's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, okay, they right. got me the Sophons. Do you know what the Sophons are yet? Uh, the, the two Sophons that came and they like changed the physics and stuff and all that. But you don't know what they're capable of yet fully, do you? Because I haven't made uh, it past to the final episode of this because the Sophons are, you know, a huge part of why the aliens have as much time as they do to come. Yeah. Right. So, so the short so, answer is, yeah, I can answer yes. Yeah. Definitively yeah, yes. The, I know that the Sophons are going to do stuff so that there's uh, plenty of time for them uh, because otherwise, you know, time would not be on their side. But with the Sophons in place, time will be just fine. And have they, by the end of the season one, have they established, has the humans established like a, a like a war star fleet or anything like that? They, we, we, all we have are the, the wall okay. facers or whatever they're called. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, okay. but no, we, I don't think. So that the next season must be some of the wall facers plans get put into effect. And that's where you start seeing, you know, more of the militarization aspect. Um, but the, the ultimate wall facer, I mean, that's one of the best twists of any book I've ever read. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that. But like it was, it, it catches you off okay. guard. But it's brilliant. Okay. I, I know what's happening on a three hour flight tomorrow. I'm going to be listening to, I'm going to, I'm not going to try and read. I'm just going to listen to, I'm going to start the books. It's what three books, right? Mm. And then they, and then they have a fourth one. Do you know, have you read that one? No, I think death's end was the last one that I got through. I didn't know there was a fourth one. I yeah, know maybe it's, it's a shorter one. I think I did. Re, you know, I, it's like somewhat disconnected. I'll have to look back at my reading history because I, I finished them a, uh, like a year and a half ago for the second. Right time. on. Yeah. So it, the I think the first three maybe were written by the gentleman's name that you just said, and yep. then the fourth one is written by somebody else, but it's uh, approved by the yeah, the author. It was connected. Yeah. Yeah, and and they actually tell you a little bit about the physiology of the the aliens that you didn't. Pick okay. up for certain, for certain, in mm. the books. Although you can, they drop so many hints, at least in the in the shows on on TV. But I think they just come out and kind of say it in the in that uh, fourth book or what. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to get started. Okay, enough of that. But you had something that you were uh, watching, right? Yeah. So I uh, I love nature documentaries, nature specials. Like I love the outdoors in general. And Apple TV put this series together. Uh, it's 12 episodes called Earth Sounds. And basically, Apple TV, I, I don't think cheaps out. When they make a series, I think they, they try to do a, a really complete job. And essentially what this whole series is about is each different episode tracks in a different part of the world. And it's all about just the acoustics, the sounds that come from nature, whether it's an owl's ability to hear a mouse crawling under a snowdrift a mile away. And they use these really advanced microphones to basically play sounds and identify uh, 
the way that animals in nature uses acoustics to hunt, to mate, it's like a lot of it's just like, you know, foreplay. It's like how these right. different pigeons make noises that are, you know, grou ground grouse that make noises that attract females, but they beat their wings in such a way that it projects forward so predators can't hear it and they know where their, you know, potential mate is. They have, you know, how humpback whales can make some of their calls go, you know, 50 miles underwater. And mm -hmm. the recording of them, a lot of these sounds have never been heard by humans before because they're just outside our threshold of, of human hearing. And so, uh, you know, they're able to recreate some of these sounds of nature in a way that, uh, you know, you've never heard before. And, and having, you know, a fully immersive system, like I'm in a rainforest and I'm hearing, you know, this, uh, this bat project, you know, a sonics through this rainforest and it just is so immersive. And then they spend like the last 10 minutes of each, each episode talking about the technology, how they were able to put cameras and the camera works is phenomenal too. And put microwave uh, microphones in different parts, um, you know, under glaciers and things like that, where they've never been able to do it before, but it's all about sound. And again, you know, to have something where I'm so passionate about audio, but then also this nature documentary and be able to shut my lights off and turn the system That's on cool. and feel like I'm, you know, in the Antarctic or in a rainforest. Uh, if you're into nature and, and that kind of thing, I, I couldn't recommend earth sounds enough on Apple TV. Um, it, it was such a, just an engaging watch. And I'm actually trying to get some of this content to demo because I want to show people what an elephant blowing his trunk in your ear sounds like, or, you know, what, uh, oh God, there were so many different examples I could list through, but, um, I want that whale base. Yeah. <laughs> You got to get the whale base. I mean, these things are projecting sound, you know, hundreds of miles. It's uh, it's impressive. Then even like, you know, antelope butting heads and like the the decibel level if you're standing close to that and it's just a uh, it's really impressive. That that's awesome. Yeah, I'm 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 going to check that out. Oh, and you know, Barry Barry is uh, he's on the team, man. Former trumpet player, current sci-fi fan, SVS follower. He's uh he's 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 in the group, man. He's in the club. Um, he might, he might have dual SB uh, one thousand pros by uh by the end of next week. Who knows? You never you never know. Um, and speaking of that, and then looking at the clock, we are at the end of our time. It's flown by. Um, you know, I was I was like, okay, we both got to pack and get ready, and maybe we'll kind of go short. Well, we've done the full hour already. So, uh, Nick, thank you for that. Well, I haven't even talked about the diamond coated tweeter or the force balance woofer array and the ultra evolution. We're going to have to do a, a, a secondary follow up. A, to another, this job, another please. show. It's going to have to happen. It's going to have to happen. So there's, there's more ladies and gentlemen, there's more to know. So keep your eyes peeled. And for those that have subscribed to both channels, if they ring the bell, they'll be notified when this great content comes out. So they'll know when to watch, right? They can be like, Oh, it's going to happen. Um, uh, but, uh, I guess to final to the final closing, uh, if you do want to win the SVS SB1000 Pro, make sure on the at Giles McCoy channel that you comment why uh, or that you're interested in winning one. And uh, I will uh, pick the winner after Expona when we get back uh, next Tuesday. And uh, and I'll try and uh, and reach out to and if I can if I can get in contact with the winner by the time I stream next Tuesday I'll announce that otherwise I'll work on that contact but uh, Tuesday will be the last day so make sure you get your entry in before noon on Tuesday next week which is what the uh, nine seven the sixteenth yeah the sixteenth um, and uh, and someone luckily will have a, a, another subwoofer added to their collection and be able to enjoy that awesome animal whale base much better than. <laughs> I mean, it does, it only sounds good on an SVS subwoofer. If you're, if you're doing that humpback whale base, you got to have it. Um, and if you don't mind, can I throw out one more teaser, Giles? Giles? Absolutely. We got, uh, we got Expona. We'll be in 1442 and 1444 at the show, but there'll be other opportunities to win SVS products this week as we are doing our own audiophile happy hour this thursday at 6 p.m you can find us as all of our youtube folks who uh some of which are tuning in right now know um we'll be going live then from our rooms at expona being able to showcase the systems behind us giles you are more than welcome to join virtually or if you want to just pop into one of the rooms uh absolutely last year and uh you know share your two cents what your experience has been what you're expecting from the show uh but yeah so this thursday 6 p.m check out the svs youtube or facebook we'll be broadcasting live there and and maybe you'll see this guy as part of it
Absolutely. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. Oh, and you know, I have to roll back one, one final comment too, I guess I keep saying they're final, but it's never final. Um, you said, you know, for the animal sounds, you know, this was ways that they can, you know, attract a mate. I can remember doing something or at least in my head thinking I was doing something similar when I was in high school, as I would try to rattle people's windows and doors with the bass in my car, thinking to myself, I am the coolest cat ever with turning heads. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know if it really worked as effectively as I had hoped, but man, I was trying. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, that is, uh, you know, that is natural selection right there. You are attracting a mate with those, uh, you know, those long, low frequency sound waves they just That's travel right. for miles and, and they know when you're coming and, and uh, i'm sure that i could get all the way down to like 30 hertz or something <laughs> <laughs> back in the day all right ladies and gentlemen that's going to be it we're going to close it up uh nick th uh, thank you so much for joining really really appreciate it everybody else out there thank you for joining your time is precious so i appreciate you spending it with me and nick so thank you so much everybody take care Happy listening. thanks all see ya <laughs>